All right, and welcome back to my series on making this website for a fictional brewery. Uh, so far, we've gotten this local header area here done, and we've styled this up. And now what I want to do is when we click on these arrows here, uh, left and right, that it actually cycles through and we get different ones appearing in the middle here. And when I was doing this, I did run into some really just silly mistakes that I was making myself, especially with the JavaScript. I tried to show you as much as possible how I fixed those, so I think it can be a really useful learning experience. Sadly, the design doesn't really turn out as awesome as I was hoping it would. You know, I was happy with the, the functionality of it. I just wish it looked a little bit better uh, once the cycling was done. Also, to get the JavaScript to work and to make something really easy to do it, I used a kind of cool mix-in uh, for my SAS, so I think that'd be nice and fun to look at as well. So to do that, we're going to need some JavaScript. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and make a new file. We'll just call this uh, carousel.js. And we're ready to go. I'm going to go over to my index before I forget. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and add in my script tag. Um, and the SRC for this will be carousel.js. And we got to do a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is find a lot of the things. So I'm going to do const carousel. So I'm going to be looking for my carousel and that's going to be equal to my document.query selector. And we called this one, what did we call it? Uh, grid carousel. So what that does is it uh, pretty much saves my grid carousel. It's going to find it. So it's doing a selector. It's looking through my whole document. Um, to find something with the class, so dot uh, grid carousel here. And just so we can see it all uh, there. So the const is like var, uh, but it's part of ES6. It's why I'm getting a little uh, thing here. GS hint is just saying that it's not available for everybody, but that's okay. Um, and actually for now, I can probably get away with doing something like that. Um, we need another one, so my slides. So instead of doing a document query selector on this, I'm gonna do a carousel query, query selector all. Um, and the reason I'm doing query selector all is query selector will select the first thing in the page that has that class or an ID or whatever it is um, that you put in here. If you have lots of things and you want to select them all, you're going to have to come onto here um, <clears throat> um, and select them all. So it was a good carousel item, I believe, is what I called it. Um, the next thing I want is my two buttons. So const, uh, we can call it left button. Again, carousel, query, selector, and so it was just JS left. And then we can do my, you guessed it, right button equals carousel dot query selector JS right. Super. So what that's going to do is that's going to, I can now select all of those things really nice and easily. Um, now the next thing I need to do is just get the location for each one of these. So each one of these has a specific place right now and I want to figure out what that place is. Now I just realized something though. Um, what I want to do is when I click this um, with grid, you can use an order. So if this is order one, two, three, four, and five. The only problem right now is none of these actually have an order on them. So I need to apply an order to all of those. Um, I just want to make this as easy as possible. But what we're going to have to do is I'm going to make a abstracts. I'm going to come here to mixins and I'm going to create a mixin with my SAS because uh, it's going to be the easiest way to automatically apply something to each one of these and not have to manually do it. So uh, I'm going to call this uh, mixin apply order and for this we need to give a number and the number will be how many slides we have but I want to be this is the idea with a mixin is I could reuse this over and over again if I needed to. Um, so what we're going to do is for I from one through number. And I'll explain all of this in one second. And then what we can do is our nth of type for i. And again, I'm going to explain all of this in one second. Uh, order is 
NumPy. Copy, paste. Okay, so it looks really confusing if you're not used to SAS. And what this is doing is um, it's looking at uh, for i. So it, what it's going to do is it's going to go for i from one through number. So what this means is i is it's going to do this for the number one. So it's going to say um, wherever I use this, it's going to do the nth of type for the number one, so the first one. So it's gonna grab this first one and then it's gonna apply the order one on it. Then it's going to do the same thing to the number two. And then so this becomes the number two and this becomes the number two. Then it's gonna do it for three and four and five up until it reaches whatever number I put here. Now the reason this is written I like a variable and this is in this weird little thing here where I have the hashtag and then my curly braces around it is it does um, SAS doesn't want to output variables like the way I'm using them here. Um, it wants to output. Um, it, it won't. It won't take my eye here and actually make it work. So I have to use something called interpolation, which is where I'm doing exactly this. I'm taking. Uh, I'm wrapping my variable in a hashtag. Open curly brace. Close, close curly brace, and that's going to cause interpolation where it's actually going to spit my my number one or number two or number three out. So uh, I'm going to save that and go to my main because I don't know if I ever, I never did. So we're going to import that too. Import abstracts slash mixins. And hopefully this makes more sense once you see what it actually does. So let's go and in my layout, we can go to my uh, beer. And I don't even have it, so I'm going to come up to here, I guess, and just do my and item. So this is my grid carousel item. And in here, I can do at include apply order, I think is how I wrote it. I just made it and I forget. Yep, apply order. And my number is five. Um, the reason that I'm using the number five is because I have five slides here. Um, there's, yeah, that's. <laughs> So all I've done is this, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna take the mix in it created and it's gonna apply that using the number five. So if it's save on this and we go and look at my compiled, well, we can see, oh no, I just real, no. Something happened. <laughs> Let's go and check out. Um, so nth of type 1, nth of type 2, nth of type 3, 4, and 5. And you can see that order 1, order 2, order 3, order 4, order 5, order 1. Oh, because this... Why is my... Aha. Um, basically, <laughs> what hap basically, what happened now is um, my... This doesn't have an order on it. So because this is order one, two, three, four, five, and these don't have an order, it's putting my arrows um, all the way, you know, before everything else, which sort of sucks. But I think what I'm going to do um, is just do a, what we could do, I guess, is and uh, last of type, could have an order of 99 just so it's always at the end. So it just means this one, the last of type uh, of my buttons will always be at the end. It will never be at the front because um, you know, order 99, I'm not gonna have 99 things in my carousel. So that's one way we can go ahead and fix that. I think it's probably the simplest uh, way we can do it. Um, so with that done and all of them having an order, now we can come back to our JS and we can do some stuff in here to get the order. Um, because to, what I want when I click on it and I have everything move, um, what I need this to be doing is uh, I need it to first know what the what the order on each one of them is so it can change that number. So I'm going to create something called get order, order, and um, this is going to be a function. So um, I'm just trying to think. We want it to get like an element or something. We want it to get the element. Um, so const, we're going to say styles is get computed, computed style of the LM. So whatever element we give it, we want to get the computed style. Um, so what computed style means is if I inspect element on this, 
you get the little computed and you have all this stuff here, you can get the computed style for anything. So get computed style lm const uh, order, we'll say order value is the styles order. So it can look through all of these and we want to find the order that's in there. And do 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 so order so then it sees the number three so it's going to save the number three in there now the only problem with this is whenever it does that it's saving that number as a string uh, which is like letters it's the same thing there it's not actually saving it as a number so we also have to do this little parse int order value which means it's going to take that string and turn it into int is integer so it's going to go from something like this where it's a string to the actual number three uh, which is what we need because we need to do stuff with it and then we're gonna have it return order so it's whoops re turn so when we run this it's gonna find whatever element I put in there it's gonna find all of these styles then it's gonna find the order in there then it's gonna turn order into a number instead of a string and then it's gonna spit that number out for us so we can use it and let's see if we can do this now so I'm gonna do a function here called move right um, so I'm using arrow functions here, which are part of ES6. Uh, so we're going to do slides for each. So here we have our slides. So what the for each does is it means it's going to loop through. It knows, uh, well, when you do a query selector all, it's giving you a node list. So this for each will um, loop through each uh, item in my node list. So for each, we're going to do a function. Um, and we'll, we need the slide. So for each um, for each slide, we're running a function more or less. So the order is going to equal get order of the slide. So whatever slide we're on, say it's going to do for each. So it's going to do this one first. It's going to see that the order. It's going to run this function here. It's going to get the number one, and it's going to save that uh, here under order. Then it's going to do the same thing again, and it's going to save it as number two, and the same thing number three, four, and five. Um, if so, now we have to say if that number, if my order is less than slides length, right? Um, so when we have our slides here, if you do slides length, it's going to come out with the number five because it knows there's five slides. So if the number is less than the five, effectively. Um, we can do slide style order is equal to order plus equals one. So it's going to take whatever number is the order, it's going to add one to it, and it's going to hit the slide up with that. Um, so this is my slide, the style of my slide, the order, you get it, um, is equal to, and this order is different from this one because this one is coming from here. Um, so if the order is plus equal to, or it's going to get plus and equal to one, so it's going to move that thing over by one. And the only problem is, and the reason I did the slide length, so less than the slide length is one, two, three, and four. We all want them to go up, but this one here, the last one, we don't want that to go to number six. We want this to change number one. So it goes back to the beginning. So I can do an else slide style order is equal to one. So it's going to get the order, figure out where each slide is. It's going to, if the slide number, if the order number is less than four, it's going to add one to it. And if it's this last one, which is number five, it's going to bring it down to one, which should bring it all the way back to here. Great. Cool. So now we actually want to use this. So my, which this is move right. So my right button, add event listener. So scroll down so you can see things a bit better. So I want to listen for a click. And when I click, I want to do something. So what do we want to do? We want to move right. I'm going to save that file. I'm going to cross my fingers. <laughs> and I'm going to click the right button. And I'm going to click the right button. Oh, and it's working. Good. Okay, so you can see. And if we just if we look at this is ESB. If I click, 
ESP is here now. If I click, ESP is moved to here now. Then it's moving all the way over to here and it is cycling through. Now because of the faded colors, I actually find it's kind of weird. But hmm, we'll see if we keep those faded colors because it's kind of hard to keep track if it's actually moving or cycling the way you'd expect it to. Um, the problem with having a static thing like I had, um, it sounded like a good idea, but now that I'm seeing it in action, I'm not sure how much I like it. We'll see, we'll see. But I still like that it's working. So now we want to do the same thing for the left, right? Well, for not left, yeah, you know what I mean. Constant move left. Move left, I think, might be a little bit harder. So for my move left, what do we want to do? Same thing as before. We want to look at all my slides. So slides for each function slide. All right. And once again, I'm going to need the order. So order for each one is get order slide. And this is why it's nice to save things as a, um, a function here. So I don't have to rewrite this whole thing. Like I could, I could have put all of this into here and made it work but since I'm reusing it, it I'm reusing this twice so it's much easier if this is all saved up over here instead um, so get order of my slide now here it's the opposite of before so if order because there I need it if this one so all of these ones so this one needs to go that way so if the order is what did I do before if the order is less than slide length, greater than, no. If the order is less, uh, greater than one. If the order is greater than one, because I'm worrying about the first one, not the last one this time. If the order is greater than one, slide style order. Instead of doing the uh, plus, I want it to do a minus. So it's going to remove one from whatever the order was. Else, oh, this is, I think, going to work. Else slide style order is equal to five. So when we're moving to the right, we're taking the one that was five and making its order one. Now we want to take the one that's one and make it five. Or even, I'm wondering if slides length could be more um, functional. So if ever I had more than five slides, this, th this would make sure that it actually goes to the end, I think. Oh, and I need to <laughs> left button add event listener, click. Um, move left. Oh, it's not working. Where's my console? Maybe it's 25. Whoops, I forgot my underscore. I was a little messy <laughs> in creating this. Save. Oops, uh, this way. There we go. Save. Ah, whoa. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, let's just do um, five. Refresh. So this way is working fine. But if I do that way, oh, that worked. Now it's working when I go that way. Refresh. That's weird. Okay, refresh. <laughs> oh, they're all becoming negative one, so my arrow is moving over to here. Oh, I just said it should become negative one. I forgot to do is equal to order minus one. Save. It's a little sloppy doing my left one compared to my right one. There we go. Okay, it's working now. And you can even see here, um, when I click it, you can see all the orders updating on it, which is cool. Good. Now, um, as I just mentioned, I don't really like, it's not super obvious. I might also have this add a class. Um, or 
order. Um, if the order is bigger than one, da 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 da. Else that. If the I want if it's the middle one. If the order is through one two three. If we're on number three. So I think what we can say is here like if if order is equal to two slide class list add featured basically um it, this is an if statement that has nothing no else but i don't know let's see if this works and then i'll explain it um so when i click on this they're all getting featured right oh there we go okay so if the order is equal to two the, I'm adding the this featured class list, this featured thing to it. So if the order is equal to two, so if the item is two, and the reason this is working is it's doing this. If it's two, it's becoming featured, and then it's adding the order to it, so it's moving it over one. When even this should probably have an else on it, no? Because now if I this has the added feature, and if I now do that, now I have two featured. So I also have to do else slide class list remove featured. So this one is my featured one. Click next. This one is my featured one. Good. Um, so I have this if state is if else and then this one. So this one's going to run first. It's going to do that. So it's going to add and remove all my featured things. And then pretty much instantaneously, it's going to do this one. Um, over here and so now I can control that so the reason I think I'm going to do that now is if I go back to my beer and I turn all of this off right yeah so it's still gonna work um, but this is Um, if this was animated, I think that like little thing would work, but because we're playing with order, we can't really animate it. So if I go back to my index here, I have my carousel item, my fig caption. So that's my grid carousel caption, which is inside my item. So let's go back to my beer here. Uh, grid carousel, grid carousel item. So no, we can just come to here uh, and caption display none, save. Oh, because we're using one FR. Okay, I'll have to fix that. Uh, maybe I will use grid gap then. Um, so let's display none. And then, um, so I have my grid carousel item. Um, oh, I'm gonna have to put featured on by default on my third one here because I need that. The JS doesn't run until we've done one of them. Um, and caption.featured display block. Oh, because it's not featured. Whoops. Um, and featured. So if my item is featured, the grid uh, I can do and again and caption that should be working but it's not do I have a feature did I yeah I did okay making sure I saved it sometimes I forget to save these things image and then display none let's just go look at my compiled CSS um, it's gonna be right around here Grid carousel, carousel item, 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 item. Grid caption, none. Grid carousel, oh. That should be dot, it needs the item on it. Um, beer. And item that is featured, the caption inside. Ha, there we go. And it still looks kind of weird, eh? <laughs> 
Oh, and it jumps around. We're definitely have to set some like set widths on this. Oh no. Oh, I didn't do it for the other way around. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> it's funny. It, it's the length of the text is dictating um, the size of things, so it's bouncing around a little bit. Um, okay, so that's working. I'm also going to do on my item transform scale 0.8. Point five, point seven. I think we'll go with. I don't want them to be too small. And then my featured and fe featured will have a transform scale one. Wow, without an animation on this, it doesn't look as good as I thought it would. Uh, one thing here that might make it a little bit better um, is if I just did an opacity of zero instead. Opacity of zero. And then this became an opacity of one. Just so it doesn't jump around. That's going to stop it from jumping. Um, Yeah, I thought that would be cooler. <laughs> uh, I'm happy it works. I'm just not too happy with how it's working, just because ah, it would be so much nicer with an animation. Another, okay, let's say <laughs> I have my scale there that's working. Um, but instead of that, what if I did... Um, and this, okay, I'm going a bit crazy here. Enth of type one, and I want the two, uh, no, the two, the five, five, scale point six, let's say. Uh, whoops. Transform scale point six. Oh, whoops, these only take one. Okay, and then I do the same thing here, but for my, I really want this to look better, two and three, <laughs> but these could be at like a seven, five, uh, two and four, not three. Oh, geez, that's, <laughs> that's hilarious. Did not think of that. Uh, okay, that's not going to work. <laughs> I could get that to work with JavaScript, but I really don't want to try that hard. Um, let's just go back a little bit to how I had it before. What if I put on my, my shadow thingy again? So when I put this back on, uh, you're noticing we don't see it, and it's actually still there. If I give this, uh, here, I'll just go to here, background red, just so we can actually see that it's there. Um, what's happened though is it's gone behind everything else, and the reason it's gone behind is because I've created new stacking contexts for these other things uh, when I was playing around with them more or less. So if you want to know more about stacking context, I do have a video on that, but the easy solution, luckily in this case, is just on my before and after, I can do a Z index on here of pretty much anything and it's going to pull them in front. I think I'm going to stick like this. Um, you get the idea that it's cycling. I just need to fix that last thing and then we'll be done with it. So because I'm using this more than once, instead of um, copying and pasting in there, I'm going to do this where let's create um, featured item, I guess. Const featured item is equal to. And now what I can do, uh, I can save that. And then right here I can do 
um, featured item. So it's going to run that and just make sure it's working. Oh, except here I made a mistake. Uh, slide. Oh, wait, here. Uh, this should be, I need to throw in an element in here. Copy that. Uh, the elements class list, the elements class list, and that element will be my slide. There we go. So it's working. So I just can take this one line of code and I can drop it into this one as well. And now it should work in both directions. Works this way, but it's not working that way. Why not? Oh, that's true. Okay, so I'm just going to change this to three. <laughs> so if it's three, but instead of being uh, happening before, we can have this happen after. Save that, and then same thing here. Take this off of here, and drop it in after my else statement. Save. Okay, so the, the only difference is now it's changing the order, then it's checking the order, which probably makes more sense anyway, and it's finding the one that's uh, right in the middle. Perfect. Okay, so it doesn't look as nice as I was sort of hoping for that to look, um, but it's kind of nice in a way. It's working. We can cycle through the different beers in there, um, so I'm going to live with it. Uh, we could definitely use JavaScript to make something a lot more complicated than this that has nice little animations and everything slides around. But for keeping it simple, uh, well, I thought it would be keeping it simple. Um, this definitely does work. So I hope you enjoyed this. So it definitely does work. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If there was a few things in here when I was doing the SAS, if you like the little mix-in I made and you've never seen mix-ins or other stuff like that, I am working on a SAS course right now. It's not out yet, but it's really it's getting really, really close. So you can find out when this course launches. Uh, there's a link down below where you can click on that. It's going to have a little page that tells you a little bit about the course, but you can put in your email address in there and get notified when the course does launch. And it's a course from beginner to real world. We're really going to cover everything in that, and I'm really excited for it to be launching. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. It's you guys watching all of this content as well as my patrons over on Patreon who help make these videos possible. So thank you to everybody. And of course, if you have any questions, any comments, don't be shy. Leave a comment down below. And don't forget until next time to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.